Hello everybody, time for our periodic video cast, lesson, podcast, YouTube information exchange, basically. So we have to talk about the coronavirus, the idea of fear, and uh, a lot of this is inspired by things I see and hear in other places and some of my own stuff. There was a, a, an unauthorized.tv podcast show by Owen Benjamin talking about this recently because he's very good, better than I am in, in many ways, on the idea of fear and how it can affect, no, how it can be used to manage behavior, how it can be used to put you into an ever smaller cage and how it can be used to move herds of people. The, the use of fear is huge. You can and should look up Edward Bernays. You should look up Ivy Lee. These are propagandists. Now we call them public relations. These are people who are able to get people to do and behave uh, the way they want. And the, two, the, the second place in getting people to behave the way that the overlords, the masters, whoever you want to call them, uh, the, the, the number two, the, the second place is uh, beating the independent thought out of people. The 12-year-long system to do that is called school, and that is done to get rid of independent thought and logos and logic so that reasoning doesn't enter into your head. Remember, um, to make a sale, you have to overcome sales resistance. But if there is no resistance, if there is no sales resistance, you can sell, quote unquote, and actually sell anything you want to whomever you wish. Because the resistance isn't there. It has been removed. It has been beaten down and flattened through 12 years of compulsory schooling. The good thing is, in the United States anyway, there are burgeoning private school and homeschool and unschool and de-school movements, and that's a plus. So getting rid of reasoning and independent thought is the second place way of getting people to do or buy what you want. But the first one and the most effective one is fear. Now, in the olden days, Way, way back in about 2013 or so, I used to talk to students about my big four. Sick, stupid, broke, and afraid. And those are the four pillars of control with afraid, fear, being the biggest one. And one of the things that I've always used in, um, in English class is the movie Apocalypto, I, the method to my madness is really pretty standard. In our anthology, we have a movie, um, uh, we read a story called The Most Dangerous Game, which the first boring half is setting the table, and then the rest of that is a chase scene. It's a hunter versus the hunted, man versus man. Well, Apocalypto, the movie, is, I think it's the best chase movie ever made. And so I, we read The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell, and then we watch Apocalypto, by a film by Mel Gibson. And the movie is fantastic. And there's a scene in it where, I don't know if it's intentional, but those of us who have been able to recognize patterns, once I got shaken awake in my, probably my, un, I'm ashamed to admit, my early 30s, shaken awake, I started to recognize patterns better than I had recognized them before. And so there's a scene in Apocalypto where the tribe has been hunting and they've captured their prey. And then Jaguar Paw, the main character, turns around and looks and confronts these this other tribe that's walking and a way to get, they're walking through the forest where 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 Jaguar Paws tribe lives and they're dirty and they look shaken and they ask to please just walk through our lands have been ravaged and and they seek a new beginning is what the guy says to Jaguar Paw 
and Jaguar Paw's father has to hold back Jaguar Paw. Flint Sky is his name. Flint Sky is the old man, and he has to tell, pull his son back. Like they, they, they trade, and, and Flint Sky says, Pass, go through our forest, go through our jungle, it's okay. And Jaguar Paul wants to hear what, what, what do you mean your lands have been ravaged and you want to, a new beginning? And the father pulls him back, says, come. And then the dialogue, I actually, I actually have my notes. And the dialogue between father and son is indicative of what I'm talking about, what the people at particularly, uh, Owen Benjamin Vox Day at Unauthorized TV have been talking about. Uh, there are others who've talked about it uh, uh, for years, you know, um, overcoming this kind of thing and pushing back. And so Flint Sky is the father, and he says to his son, those people in the forest, what did you see on them? Is the old man talking. Jaguar Paw says, I do not understand. And Flint Sky, the old man says, fear. Deep, rotting fear. They were infected by it. Did you see? Fear is a sickness. It will crawl into the soul of anyone who engages it. It has tainted your peace already. I did not raise you to see you live with fear. Strike it from your heart. Do not bring it into our village. And... I don't know if these things are synchronicity. I don't know if it's fate. I don't quite know for sure what it is, but the movie's made by Mel Gibson, which should tell you something, anyway, about somebody who is fearless. And it is explaining to you, Flint Sky is explaining to you, explaining to us, the power of fear and how dangerous it is. And he says it's a sickness. It has infected those people. And I think he's right. And you see it with the idea of this coronavirus situation. What I, what I found fascinating about the whole thing, and this is where, uh, I, what, what made me have to talk about it, is the fact that other people have noticed the um, fear-mongering, the scam-like nature of coronavirus. It sounds like a regular flu or a serious cold. Not only that, when the entire corporate media is dancing to the same tune about something that has, and I can't give you a number, 3,000 deaths, the vast majority in China, you, you'd have to be, you'd have to be kind of stupid to take it seriously. And I don't like using words like that. People need to learn and grow. But when I'm telling you that somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three million people die each year of the regular flu, let's say that's worldwide. I don't think that's from the United States. I think that's the world. Two to three million people die a year. Let's say I'm wrong. Let's say it's 500,000 people die of the flu every year. You know that number is going to be wrong with all the areas of the world that have a, a lack of modern medicine. And no one says anything. Well, that's the flu. It's not special enough. What about pneumonia? I found a credible source that says somewhere in the neighborhood of 600,000 people die worldwide of pneumonia. 600,000. I don't know what that is per day. Divide, so you do the math. 600,000 divided by 365. No one, no, no press, no, they're not closing a port. They're not going to barricade the train station. Northern Italy doesn't get quarantined. Pacific Northwest doesn't shut down. There's no notice on the homepage of the Mount Vernon, New York school district website about it. There's one on coronavirus. The last week, emails, text messages, how to deal with it, what to know, where to look. It is amazing that people are getting hyper about this. 
especially because a lot of people are saying things like, well, I thought we were still worried about Ebola or Zika virus or SARS or H1N1 swine flu or the regular swine flu that was before that or avian bird flu. You, I mean, it, it goes on. I can, I can name others if I thought about it long enough with all of the things that we've had uh, coming through. The, um, there was one where it was the lettuce in, the, in Taco Bell. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was kind of like a real bit of bacteria. Uh, and so these are things that over and over, it's Lucy pulling the football away over and over again, just repeatedly this kind of thing where you've got an instance that makes no sense. Something like PTSD. My, my nephew is in the Marines. My brother was a Special Forces Marine sniper. The PTSD thing within the military is real. You have people going overseas and doing things that are not okay, and they come back broken. And the last time I heard a number, it was in the teens, and it was of people who commit suicide, vast majority men who commit suicide every day. Every day. Not mainstream news, nothing to discuss, no movement, no pink ribbon on the car, nothing. No New York Times front page zip. So you have all of these things based on fear. And then what I started doing was I started thinking about what I do every day. I'm in a public school where fear is the name of the game. Um, and I work in the bad neighborhood school. Um, the bike rack in our in front of our school is empty. And so we have, geez, fights all the time. People are sometimes afraid to go into the cafeteria because that's where a lot of the stuff happens. We also have a different kind of fear. If you don't do assignment X, you will fail the class. If you fail the class, you won't get your diploma. And if you don't get your diploma, you're a failure in life and you're not going to be able to get a good job or a job at all. And you're going to be a loser. That's fear. Uh, there's a there's something to be said for getting a high school diploma simply because our society's rules demand it. And unfortunately, it's become one of these hoops that must be jumped through. But, the, you know, there's their homeschooling GED. That's why I have the GED report, because you can get a high school diploma in two days if you can sit and take the GED exam and skip all the other stuff. So it's one of those things where fear in various forms and sometimes subtle ways is used, I was going to say can be used, but I'm going to say is used to get you to do something you don't want to do or to get you to follow the crowd or to get you to behave in a certain way. And so I don't know if it's a conspiracy. I don't know if it's the power elite. Again, is it the the Zionists? Is it the Jesuits? Is it the Illuminati? Is it the, is it Skull and Bones, Book and Snake? The Society of the Dragon, Club of 300, Club of Rome. I, I don't know who it is. There's a lot more where that came from. The Society of the Cincinnatus. Remember them? So, the Aspen Institute. I mean, come on, people. I don't, I don't know who it is. I do know what I see happening. I went to Costco yesterday just to get stuff. We happened to need bottled water. You seem to enjoy sucking down fluoridated water. I do sometimes too. No jokes, please. And so I wanted to get bottled water. And they were sold out. And not only were they sold out, limit of five individual cases per customer. Well, guess what? <laughs> the limit was zero because they were all gone. So people were stocking up on bottled water, among other things. People walking around in masks. I saw on the news, on the corporate news, which is now just pure entertainment, uh, those face masks were selling for $20 each. The stock market 
went into the toilet last week. Guess who bought stock? Why wouldn't you? It's on, it's on sale. It's a discount. I'm convinced. Well, I don't know if I'm convinced. I know for a fact that there are a lot of people, let's say in the finance industry, who they don't mind buying when it's low so that they can sell when it's high. And some of them really must be laughing at the herd. Some of them, and, and that's a demeaning way to put it, the herd. Those are people with souls. But to if you see Pan American Silver at $19 a share, and it was $25.90 five days ago, you buy. Chesapeake Energy, 26 cents a share. I think it went down to 21 cents a share. Is Chesapeake Energy going to go bankrupt? I don't know. Maybe, but I bought. So, you know, it's like this weird dance that we're in, that people are afraid, and they, they've really internalized it. I remember telling my upstairs neighbor, uh, the two of them, older couple, and I remember telling them some of the crazy stuff that I talk about at work, and they were like, oh, you can't. You better be careful. Don't say that. Uh, all nervous. And I I have to give myself credit because this is years ago before I kind of became the person I am today. And I remember, and I said to them, why would I be afraid? Afraid of what? Oh, you could, you know, they could come after you and take your job. I said, really, they're going to eliminate the tenure laws on a free speech claim. Because I said something that is offensive. Well, actually, it wasn't even offensive. I would say things that were cutting edge or conspiratorial. I would say things out of the mainstream. It wasn't because I wasn't going to talk to the old couple upstairs about hardcore conspiracy or truth movements or anything like that. I'm not going to talk to them about that. I forget. It was something that I would consider pretty mellow. <gasps> oh, it was probably something political. You can't talk about that. That's not okay. They were scared. I didn't see it at the time that they were that they had internalized the fear that Flint Sky was saying was de fear, deep rotting fear. But they had. They had internalized it and said, Oh, don't talk, be careful. So they wanted me to not speak clearly. They wanted me to not search for the truth with young people because they were afraid. That's amazing when you think about that. And there's a, the, the, to end this, there was a quote. I actually wrote it down. It's on the sticky note on my steering wheel here in the studio. And it was one of the um, Owen Benjamin quotes. He says, sometimes he, like a lot of us, says things just in stream that are exceedingly profound. And I'm going to remember this one because uh, he, he said, you are your own prison guard. And that is deep, deep truth. You are your own prison guard. You are holding yourself back. And I think of the old couple upstairs, and they were holding themselves in jail. They're holding themselves in, a, in kind of a mental prison to not say anything overly uh, intense or overly out of the main. And, and it's so true. You are your own prison guard. They, these people were in, a, in, a, in jail. And it's so ironic because they're white, secular, Jewish, liberal Democrats in the Bronx. They, no, no one is coming after them. No one is going to be worried about what they say. No, no one would go after their jobs. No one would say anything to them. They're, you can write it in stone. Vote Democrat, liberal. They all. They're always talking. They were always talking to me about um, Bernie Sanders. This is back before Sanders was a presidential candidate. This is a while ago now. This is a good 10, 12 years ago. Bernie Sanders and the socialism and and left. You know, left is the way and liberal Democrats. All this kind of stuff. Yeah, and they were still scared. And they were of a of a group of people. No white 
secular Jewish democratic liberal in New York is in any danger ever. But they got nervous and scared when I said I sometimes cut down to the white meat at work. That is amazing and sad and a bit of brainwashing that you should be aware of. So I'm going to leave you with this, right? That's the, that's the quote of the day. And I have a million quotes in my room and maybe this will make the cut. I think it will. You are your own prison guard because we allow others to use fear to limit our behavior and to control our purchasing history. We allow them to do that. And we allow them to do it way too much. And I think it's time to stop. So, you know, see this coronavirus thing as the latest bit of fear mongering. Stay healthy, eat well, uh, be more spiritual if you're not already religious, avoid sugar, and your life will be better. Spend as much time with your family as possible and see this nonsense, this coronavirus foolishness for the nonsense that it is. I see it as fear-mongering, and I know I'm right. I see it as fear-mongering, craziness, that is an agenda-driven bit of tomfoolery. So do what I do. I'm going to hang out with my friends in a couple of days. We're going to mock it. We're going to come up with our, we have some stories to tell. It's funny to us and you should do the same. No homework, no required reading. Just think for yourself and be the author of your own script. I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care.